Um, all right, hi everybody. Um, thanks uh, to everyone uh, for joining us. I'm John Boyd. I'm part of the uh, Transportation Alliance's communications team. Um, really appreciate you all joining us for a discussion today on driver recruitment and retention. And a big thank you to our presenter, Natalie Perry of Z-Trip. Um, just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, you can join the conversation at any time by unmuting yourself or by using the chat feature. And we also would really encourage you, if you feel comfortable, to turn off your camera and to join the discussion. Um, uh, and my colleague, Matt Yan, who's on the, um, on the call, he's gonna be monitoring questions that are sent to us either via to the whole group or a direct message to us. And he'll be posing those, uh, those questions um, throughout the, uh, uh, the presentation. And last but not least, we are recording uh, this webinar. And with that, uh, I want to extend a very warm welcome to Natalie Para, and I'm going to hand it over to Natalie to start our discussion. Natalie. Hello. Um, so I first want to say a little bit about myself. I have been in the transportation industry for um, about 12 years. Um, I started as an outside salesperson um, and um, did that for about five years. And then I had an opportunity, um, had an old boss of mine that started a um, payday lending online um, uh, company and asked me if I wanted to come work banker hours, uh, get paid twice as much. And, you know, it sounded all great. Um, when I went over there, when you do payday, it's very heavy in lead generation. You buy leads for um, a, a lot of money, and then it's how fast you uh, get to them because someone else is buying those leads at the same time. Um, so when um, I missed the chaos and of uh, the 24-7 that we have in transportation, so I said, I want to come back to this. Um, I guess I needed a little more... Um, uh, chaos in my life. And so I, um, when I came back, um, I came back doing still the sales and marketing. Um, and what I realized is that there is one person out there, me, that was trying to promote our brand. And there are, you know, at the time it was just, in, I was just in Kansas City. We didn't have all of the companies we have now had 400 drivers that could be recruiting for me. Um, they are a brand, they are your brand um, that is out driving your vehicle. Um, so that vehicle is being seen by um, thousands of people. So how do I recruit a better driver that can help me promote our brand so I can work um, smarter as a um, sales and marketing person? And then that came into um, using some of my lead generation skills um, from the payday industry and, and building a platform for us to recruit and retain. And that's how I got into recruit, uh, recruiting and re attention of the drivers. Um, so you can go on to the next slide, John. So when we go to, um, and I talked to a lot of industry um, peers, I always hear I can't find drivers. Now, if you would ask, and, and that would, question was the same, whether it was uh, before pandemic, during the pandemic, and now post-pandemic, um, if we want to call it post, um, with, with the, the people still receiving some of the uh, government assistance, is I, it's the number one thing we hear is can't find drivers, there's no drivers out there, um, and and it's kind of like when you have a driver saying, I can't make any money. Uh, if you hear it enough, you start to believe it. But then if you really drill down and look at the data, um, you often find that the driver could make money if they put in the hours or if they accepted the trips um, that were given to them. Um, so that is what we found with, with our applicants and our recruiters that we had around the US as they said, I same thing, can't find drivers. Um, and then we, when we built this platform, then we could see how many applicants were coming in per lead um, or per, per ad and then what the conversion was. And so we were able to really um, find that we didn't have a, a lead shortage or 
um, <clears throat> an applicant shortage, we then had a conversion shortage. Um, and then it, now it's a retention. So last year, um, our company were in 22 locations um, across the US 14 states. Um, and we onboarded uh, a little over 2000 drivers last year. So during a pandemic, we were still able to onboard 2000 drivers. The problem we're having is we didn't keep 2000 drivers. Um, so I'm here just to say that, that while it's still harder now with um, applicants receiving, um, receiving the government assistant there, there are still people coming in that don't want to re require or re, you know stay on to that, but they are coming through the door. So how do you convert them? That's another thing I hear is they I got them through the door. I'm getting leads. How do I convert them? So the first thing that has to happen in your operation is there needs to be some sort of a, a plan set in place. Um, we acquired between 2018 and 2019 20. Um, 21 locations in 18 months. Um, and when we, we would acquire these uh, companies, we would ask who, who does your recruiting? And the, the answer we often received was everybody. Um, and if everybody's doing it, nobody is being held responsible for it. So you have to have some sort of a, a clear plan. Joe is going to do it, he's going to put the ads out and then Joe's gonna to respond to the leads and then Joe is gonna set the appointments to get to come in. And then Mike is the person gonna do the inter, um, interview process. Um, and then so-and-so is going to be the person that helps them onboard. So you have to have some sort of a plan in place or, or it just doesn't work. Um, next, next slide. So you have to first have the leads. So how do you source a lead? Um, and then, you know, one of the things we also, I, I saw is that when someone would apply, um, and, I, and I've done this in some other locations that are not ours when I've helped other, other cities, um, is that they require a form that is, you know, I want your social, I want your last 10 years work history, I wanna know, how long you've been driving, what's the quickest way from downtown to the airport? I mean, just, you know, 45 minute application. Um, and that's not how, how today's applicants work. So when you apply to uh, a new health insurance, when you apply for, um, if you wanna buy a car, if you apply, if you want to get um, uh, homeowners insurance, any kind of application you do online is now your name, your email, and your phone number, and that is pretty much it. Um, and then you know how you, you get inundated with, with them emailing you and, and bothering you. Um, but they are just now, and that's really all that's required. Um, this is a short form that I created. It's an example Google form. Um, you can use any, any kind of form that you can find out there. We use um, Formstack a lot. Uh, Jot form is something that's in this PowerPoint that I presented. Um, that is a free free form. Um, and then and and it just needs to be very simple. Some locations, like I know in Colorado, you can't ask if they um, have had any felonies in the past. But whatever you have to have, um, again, name email, phone number is really all you need. You could put on there above, hey, you need to be 23 years of age or whatever your requirement is per your insurance or your um, PUC, um, but very short, simple questions. Again, you're just trying to get their information. Um, so some sort of a CRM or at least some sort of a free applicant um, form. Um, there's some CRMs out there that are free. Um, Zoho makes one. It's called Zoho Recruit. They have a free version. Um, we use Salesforce. Um, it's a little more robust um, than, than most um, operators are going to need. Um, but that's all we ask for. And then, John, you can go to the next, next slide. There you go. 
And then so you have a form to collect their data. So what do your ads look like? Um, and where are you um, putting those ads? Your ads need to be refreshed about every three to five days um, to stay on top. Craigslist can get pretty expensive. I'm not sure what it is in Massachusetts to post a job ad, but I've got to believe it's somewhere in between $25 and $35, maybe $45. So that can get pretty expensive. Um, Indeed is one we use a ton. They're, um, and we don't pay. We have, there's a spot that they kind of hide that says, do you want to sponsor this ad? And the answer should be no, unless you really um, are having a really hard time um, getting leads, but we get about 2000 leads per month um, and I don't sponsor any ads. Um, and that's in, in all of our locations. And not every location that we put them in, do we get, you know, if I put an ad in, in Florida, I'm gonna get 200 leads per that ad versus Baltimore, I may only get um, 50 or 60. Right. Um, so we use Indeed a ton. Social media, um, so, uh, so either Facebook, they have a, a job um, portion. Um, and then what you should also do when you're doing social media on, on Facebook is join a bunch of uh, pages. So each city has, has pages uh, or groups like, um, you know, Massachusetts job hiring sites, or I know, and I'm based out of Kansas City. In Kansas City, we have a man cave site that has a, uh, 640,000 people um, in that group. So you wanna find very large groups um, that you can join. Um, it could be a something as simple as garage sales. I mean, anything that has large has a large following. So you when you when you do post, you're getting it in front of a bunch of people. Um, and then when you do post on Facebook, it will automatically ask you, do you want to post in these other groups that you belong to? And it, and all you have to do is click those boxes, and it will post in those groups for you. Um, so that's a good way. And then what I would suggest you do is when that someone replies to those job ads is that you have in Facebook, it's set up so that it has an auto response to take them to that lead form that we just talked about. Because um, when you set up a lead form, it'll give you a URL that it will take them to. And then that way you can have all of your leads in one location. <clears throat> Um, there are some free job sites out there. Um, and then driver referral is a huge um, place where we get our leads um, and have some sort of a bonus plan set up for driver referrals or, or even employee referrals, whether it's someone in your accounting office or a mechanic. Um, we still use print, which is not super popular, but it's cheap. And by print, I don't mean newspaper, but um, postcards or, or rack cards. So we have a, our salesperson that will go out to um, the holding lots at the airports and talk to other, other drivers, whether it's an Uber or Lyft driver that's holding at the cell phone lot. Um, we will put cards, we'll go to the bus barns. I'm sure they don't like us, but we will go to the bus barn and put our cards on cars near um, the bus barn because you know that person that drives a school bus has had to have gotten to the the, the bus barn somehow, um, and so we'll put cards with them. Um, we go and talk to the our hotel partners and talk to the valet companies that are at hotels, and um, oftentimes, especially during the pandemic, they didn't have full time work, um, and say, hey, let your drivers do this. Um, because you know that those drivers, for the most part, are pretty much vetted and have had a background check and have a decent MVR, um, or you, you hope they do. Um, and then LinkedIn is a great one as well. Um, again, just continuous posting on it instead of uh, boosting ads. Um, so those are the, where we put our lead sources. Um, and, and you can see our ads are are pretty vibrant. We, they're not very long. If you go to any of our Craigslist ads, they're pretty short and simple. Um, and, you know, it doesn't have a requirement list that's, you know, 
72, 72 requirements long. Your main goal is to get them in the door so that you can sell them on the opportunity that's in front of them. Um, we also don't do a ton of ads that say taxi driver um, for those that have taxi operations. Um, we do a lot of non-emergency medical transportation driver, shuttle driver, um, courier driver, because at some point they do all of these things within your operation. Um, so again, our doors, our, our goal is to get them to come to us and then um, let them know about all of the things um, that driving with your company can, can afford them the opportunity to make money. Okay, John, next slide. So you get a lead um, and then what do you do with that lead? It is um, very important um, to follow up immediately and if not immediately as fast as possible. This goes back to having someone, um, your plan in place and have someone that is responsible. So on our system, we have it set it up that it's automated. Um, so when someone applies, they automatically get an email and a text. I know that's not, um, for everyone um, and a little more advanced we you know I had to hire someone um, I hired a, a develop software development person out of India to help me set this up um, but it is important these people are out there looking for a job the good applicants are going to go find a job right away I mean they're not they're not looking for a job so that they can sit around and wait three or four days for someone to follow up with them um, and three or four days I would say in the past is was actually considered fast but you need to follow up immediately if I could um, if I could say one thing that you add from from this this the uh, webinar is make sure you add texting to your platform of how you get a hold of applicants. It, it is just the number one way that we set up appointments. It's the number one way we get a response. You are way more um, likely to get a response from a text than you are from an email or even a phone call. Um, you know, these positions that we have for drivers, they're not they're not high wages. Um, you know, maybe you're paying 15 bucks an hour, uh, anywhere from 10 to $17 an hour, or they're independent contractors. They don't have, they oftentimes may have some financial issues where they're afraid to answer the phone, especially if they've just lost their job or they're looking for a job. So shooting a text over to them um, eliminates a lot of fear of just answering a phone call. And then what is important is the continuous follow-up. Um, it's We look at, at onboarding drivers as a sales. Um, right now, there's a ton of uh, opportunity for them to go to. So it's no different than them interviewing us as us interviewing them. So if you look at, you know, as this is a sales position, um, they say in sales, you have to do eight touches to convert. Um, so this is kind of the same way. We look at the, our drivers as, you know, our number one um, customer. Um, doesn't mean all customers are great customers and you don't have to do business with all of them. But, you know, are we making them feel important? Are you texting them right away? Are you emailing them? Are you letting them know that their time is important to, um, to us? Um, and then if they don't answer, they don't respond, follow up. Again, it isn't hard to shoot a text over. You already have their phone number in your phone. There are some texting platforms out there that you can integrate with um, so that you can do uh, some importing. Um, if you do uh, use Indeed, they have a texting platform. I've not used it, um, but they do have a texting platform that, and I don't have any idea what it costs, but it's something that you can, you can get into. Um, and then we follow up automatically based on, on each one of our applicants has a status, whether they're new. Um, um, so it's new, they have an appointment, they're in process, meaning they came, came in and talked to us. Um, they're a no-show, um, they're not eligible or they're not interested. 
So if they are in the new status, that means that we continue to follow up with them for, we've, we've done the, our, our software for about uh, three years now. We'll follow up with someone for three years until they tell us to stop because while they may find a job, three months down the road, their situation may change. So as long as they, if they come back and say they're no longer interested, we, we don't follow up with them as much, but we'll shoot out, hey, you were not interested a few months back has your has your has your situation changed and we we still are needing applicants i've got to assume that every single one that's on this call needs more than one driver to get them where they need to be they need several drivers um, if you're anything like us um, our business has come back um, to pre-pandemic levels however um, we need we need some drivers to help fulfill that demand that is in there so continuous to follow, continuing to follow up. Next slide. So once you um, followed up with them and you got an appointment with them and they, they are able to come in and do that appointment, um, how do you treat them? So we had a TTA open house um, last week that we hosted in Kansas City and, uh, and there were some industry folks that came in and you know it's kind of a sharing of knowledge. And we cut the grass, we trimmed the bushes, we put up new window uh, clings, we put up new posters, we mopped the floors, had them buffed. We took out the old junker cars and put them, the wrecked cars and put them in a different lot. There were, had to have been over a hundred emails for five industry people. Um, and if we look at drivers uh, as a huge contract, uh, so if you say that the you know, University of Massachusetts Hospital wants to spend $25,000 with you, um, you would have generally those same type of things. If, they, if, if the hospital, local hospital said, I wanna come and do business with you, we wanna come by and have a meeting you, you kind of do the same thing. You send out an email, how we got to clean, we got to clean up, uh, make the office look great because this company wants to spend money with us. And so in our world, we use almost all independent contractors. We do have some employees in three of our cities, um, but we need to treat our drivers um, with that same level of respect because they are our lifeblood. So does your office and um, your surroundings look inviting. We want them to have a clean car and that's their office. Does your office look like that as well? So um, make sure that everybody has, you know, is clean. Make sure everybody in the office knows um, when an applicant comes in that they are the most important um, person. They pay our paychecks. Uh, meaning if, if we don't have them, we can't do the contracts that we have. We can't continue to service the customers and we're gonna lose the business and therefore we won't have the money to pay our paychecks. Um, so make sure everybody in the office um, is welcoming, whether it come is the dispatcher to the mechanics to, um, to whoever is in the office. Uh, make sure there's some clear signage on where to go. Most taxi operations are pretty large. There's a shop, there's um, maybe a cashier window, there's, um, several doors they can go into. Make sure there's some clear signage, whether it's just a sandwich board that says uh, new applicants through the store or whatever it may be. And then uh, make sure you're, you're dressed for success and ready to, to greet these applicants. Um, and, and then what are some things that you should fix? So here's one thing we're working on is, is our reviews online. And that, that's not only just your customer reviews, but if you have any reviews on Indeed or Glassdoor, and you may have some that you don't even know about because people can post about the jobs that they've worked in the past and they can say negative things and you may not even have an ad that they're talking about. So go and trying to fix some of those reviews. Um, and then um, we do group interviews. As, as some of you know from recruiting is there's a high no-show rate. So we have someone that sets up the appointments and then we know that every Tuesday and Thursday, we're gonna see these applicants 
Um, we don't let the applicants know that they're a part of a group interview. Um, but when there is a group interview, it's not you're not spending your entire day waiting for a no-show. So if you have, let's say you put out an ad and you set up 10, 10 interviews, and you know, if you say each interview takes an hour, that's 10 hours of your day. We don't have that kind of time. Um, so if you just say we have um, set appointments every Tuesday and Thursday or whatever day you want to use. We know that Mondays and Fridays are higher no-show rates um, just from some of the stats we've looked at. So most of our cities are Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, then that way you're not, again, wasting some of your time waiting for the no-shows. Um, also, when the applicant comes in, they may say, oh, I need to hurry up and go on to the next step, whether that be a fingerprint background, a drug screen, um, a DOT physical, whatever they need to go do. If they feel like that someone in front of them, someone else at that meeting might go do it faster than them, it gets them moving a little bit more um, on the road to the next step. And then next slide. So again, we do group uh, group meetings. Oh, go back one. Oh, sorry. There, is that the correct? Yeah. Okay. So we do group meetings, and and again, all of our most of our drivers are independent contractors. <clears throat> um, so we really kind of are selling selling them. You know, they come to an interview and don't expect to pay money. Um, but we also do a, a, a presentation for, for each one of our employee drivers as well. Um, the TTA put out a, um, a video. John, do you remember, did you guys put out that video two years ago or a year and a half um, ago? About a year and a half ago, that's correct. And it's a fantastic video. It is for, um, it's for independent contractors and, um, employee drivers um, and and this video gets someone excited to become a driver to help the community to be a part of the the transportation um, industry um, so it's a fantastic video that that's in this PowerPoint that can be shared and so when they come in you do this interview and you show this PowerPoint and get them really excited to go to the next step and almost on, on these group meetings, you wanna to, to get the applicant's mind out of thinking, of not thinking that they don't have this job. You wanna convince them that this is the job for them and to get them excited to, to join with you. They've showed up now your job is to sell them on on the opportunity. I don't know if like I hire for for other positions and I'm I'm and you know we do so many teams meetings or phone interviews. My job is to get this this applicant for, and it's for something completely different to come in for an IT position to come in and meet with us and show them all the opportunities that we have and how fun we are and how how um much room for advancement there might be and and how do we convince them how do we sell them it's hard to sell someone over the phone it's hard to sell someone on a zoom call you want to get them in front of you so that you can really put a human connection to it so that it's harder for them to say no um, it's very easy to tell someone no over the phone it's a lot harder to tell someone no in person just how humans work okay next slide So they come in, you meet with them and they say, yes, I am ready to um, go forward with your company. And then we hear, well, I, I got them to commit. And then I never hear from them again because you have to send them off to go do a drug screen, a background check. Um, if they have any PUC requirements, whatever they have to go do, we lose them. Um, I'm assuming that's happening in your operations. So what we do is once, um, let's say they came in on a Tuesday, and they've got to go do X, Y, and Z, we set an appointment with that person to come back on and meet us on Friday. So it gives them three days to go take care of these three things. And then we kind of know if on Friday they didn't show up with us, that we're not waiting for them to follow up. Um, 
we know that hey they were supposed to come back and meet with us why didn't they go do these things and it, it keeps your time management um moving along instead of kind of just we sent them out and now we don't know um so i think that one is very important have a follow-up appointment already set you can buy appointment cards um, i mean it's just a business card have your contact name on your business card and on the back set up that appointment to come back and start the training or the onboarding um, whatever your if your employees are training but if your independent contractor is onboarding um, does, that, that's all I have on that one. Get some business cards on the back of it, have an appointment set up reminder. So this goes into retention. So once you get someone in the door, you've committed them, you've spent the money on the drug screen, you spent the money on the background check, um, and then you, you train them for four to eight hours, and maybe you put them out with a mentor driver, um, and then we send them on their way and then they quit uh, within you know, two weeks. Um, and I, I often talk about when you switch from an iPhone, many of you probably switch from an iPhone to an Android or an Android to an iPhone and it sucks. And you go, why did I do this? And none of it makes sense. Or if you've ever gone from a Mac to a PC, it just, it, it, it's frustrating. Um, or if you switch dispatch software systems so training, um, or as in our world is called coaching, because we have independent contractors, we can't train them, um, is, is key. So you wanna make sure that you continue to have communication. So, you know, we, what we do is once they onboard, we bring them back um, once a week. Um, and whether it talks about how do you process a voucher, how do you, um, what do you do if you get a flat tire? Um, what do you do if, um, if you have someone that is a non-pay or, you know, how do you, how do you handle all these things? So we bring them back once a week. We talk about sales and marketing opportunities for themselves. How do you market yourself better if you're an independent contractor, if you're an employee and you allow them to take personals um, and continue to like, you know, have Sally call them only, how, you know, can you, can you have them market themselves so that they um, um, continue to want to stay? Um, safety is very important on our end. So we have a lot, we bring them back for safety um, courses. Um, if you were to, to work with, with Michael uh, Shapke and, and Melissa and, and do some NEMT courses so they can continue to grow. Um, what, are the, what are the hot spots? Where, how does the airport work? Just all of that stuff is are reasons that drivers will quit. Um, or, and it's just because there's a lack of knowledge or a lack of, I don't know, even if you say, um, call me if you have any questions, people don't. I talk about this stuff all the time, even to our own employees or our own recruiters. And, uh, and you know, none of them reach out and ask questions. People I think are just afraid to ask questions. Your drivers are the same way. They don't wanna ask questions. So you've got to bring them in and almost kind of force them to ask the questions. Um, look at their, look at how many hours they're working, look at their safety scores if you, if you track that. Um, if they're independent contractors, look at their acceptance rejection rates. Um, show them, hey, if you were to switch these hours and you were to work 7 a.m. To, to 4 p.m. versus you're going out at 9, you're missing the airport people. Um, showing them those kind of things and showing them that you care um, will retain them a, a lot longer. Um, and that's the key to the game. It does you're gonna get frustrated if you're onboarding, you know, 10, 15 drivers a week and in three months from now, you're still at the same number. Okay, the next slide. So again, most of our um, drivers are, are contracted, um, but you could say contracted or hired, um, but make sure you're re ready for them. Um, we do both on our ends. We send them out with other drivers um, and we also do in-class um, coaching. So we will have um, our tablet with our credit card machine 
and our printers all hooked up to a station and have them take fake trips. Um, accept a trip, decline a trip, reject a trip. Um, if you're in the tax industry, you know what a rapid meter is um, or a recall. Um, so we have them do all of those on a, on a fake tablet or a real tablet, but a fake trip. Um, and then we send them out with a, a mentor driver. And this also goes back to retention. If you have a mentor driver, um, when someone is new, you can say, hey, how do I grow and how do I become more part of this team and how do I continue to um, be successful? They can become mentor drivers. That's something they can look forward to. And we do pay our mentor drivers. So it's another way for them to make income. So um, then we put them out with a mentor driver for you know another four to six hours. Um, and then we bring them back after they've been with the mentor driver. So it's constant. Um, training on on their software and hardware um, we give them a ton of information and you know i'm assuming a lot of you have some different contracts and you know on our end we have contracts that maybe the city is subsidizing some of the payments and maybe um so the city is responsible for five dollars the um the customer is re responsible for three of the dollars and then um and then the company has some some responsibilities. So there's just some a lot of different information that you goes over. And then you know, so when we also bring them in, we don't just show them here's here's the recruiter and here's this. We take them out to the shop and and introduce them to the mechanics. Um, and so they're not afraid to bring a, a vehicle in and shop a vehicle before it becomes a big problem. Um, bring it in when there's when it's a small problem. Um, we bring them in and let them talk to the cashiering people um, so that they know who to go to when they have a question. Um, and some people are not technology savvy. And if you're using um, tablets, uh, the tablets can, can be a little confusing. There's stuff that pops up on, up on them all the time. And um, you wanna make sure that they understand how to, how to work those tablets. Okay, next slide. And this is the continued support. So a new driver comes in and then, like I said, we bring them back once a week um, for the next six weeks. Um, if you are doing independent contractors or even a um, like a training pay, um, this is one way that you can get around having to bring them in, you know, an independent contractor, we can't require them to come back for these meetings. So we have a rookie lease and we tell them you, you get the rookie lease as long as you come in here and come back to these meetings. If you don't come back to the meeting, you're saying you know what, everything there is to know and you don't need the rookie lease any longer. Um, but if you have employees and it's an employment thing, you can say, you know, until you complete the six six courses, whether or four courses, you're going to continue to get the the training pay until you've moved on and and got can go on to the regular pay. Um, we have Facebook pages, um, Facebook private Facebook groups for all of our drivers. So when a new driver comes in, we put them into the, our Facebook group, and then there's some peer to peer communication. Hey, there's a you know I-35 is shut down. Um, there's a huge convention in town. Um, they were doing um, inspections on Tuesday, whatever it is, it's just a constant communication so that um, they feel like they're a part of something. Even if they're, like I said, independent contractors, as humans, we want to be a part of something. We want to feel like we're given to um, someone or something. Um, and especially employees, they want to feel like they're contributing to the success of the company. So continuing to communicate with them um, is very important. We also have, now that the pandemic is opening back up and we can have meetings, we used to have quarterly meetings with our drivers. Um, pizza is very cheap. You know, if you have, let's say you have 30 drivers, have them come down for a, um, a pizza, just in a Driver appreciation doesn't have to be all at noon because you have to have some drivers out there, but you can do it from like 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. 
So do those, those quarterly um, um, driver appreciation um, parties or whatever you want to call them. We do get giveaways on those, the, the driver with the safest or the best safety score. Maybe they get a, a $10 gas card or, or they get, um, as being in the transportation industry, a lot of times we'll get um, tickets to, I don't know, tickets to events. Um, or we'll give them an extra a polo or a shirt or, you know, a coffee mug, something small um, to recognize what they've done good. If you have um, every, every uh, month we put out on our Facebook group um, for our employees, we put out a anniversary report and say, hey, thank you for being a part of us for the last what, however number many of years it's been. Um, we, you know, we are, you are the key to a success, success, just make sure you're recognizing, um, your drivers, um, and employees. So again, on Facebook, we do that. We also communicate via, via their tablet. We communicate via text to them. Um, so continuing to support them, um, whether it means that they want to go on and, um, and do some safety courses, like I said, continuing to, to support them and making them feel important so that you do retain them. All right, next slide. I, I think that's it. it. I yep. think that's it. Yep. Yeah, so um, I wanted to keep some of this open so we had some, some time for questions. Um, and I think we had some, Matt, that people had asked um, beforehand? If not, I have questions that I can throw out yeah. there. Uh, I, yeah, I can feed a few in here as well. Okay. So, um, one of the, one of the questions was, did you, it sounded like you were saying in some of your ads uh, or in, in, in all of your ads, it sounds like, are you not using the word taxi? Are you just saying we're looking for drivers? I'm, we're looking for drivers. I, I may do one taxi every two months. Um, I don't do taxi at all. Um, I mean, I I have it. So if it's in, if it's a Craigslist ad, I do have it kind of in the bottom grayed out along with Uber, Lyft, uh, DoorDash, Amazon, um, just so that if someone's searching it, it's kind of a keyword that pops up. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do indeed, you can do keywords. Um, so I have it in the keywords, but not on the ad itself. Right. Um, I, I just, know. the number of leads I get for yeah. a driver is significantly higher than the number of leads I get if I put taxi. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then another question was, um, and, and for everybody, please feel, feel free to jump in. If anybody has any questions, you can unmute yourself um, and just chime and just turn right in. Um, the next question is, um, I know you mentioned the importance of texting and anybody who knows, any, especially I would say with the younger generation, anybody who knows who's, who works with them, texting is extremely important. Um, what do you use for a texting technology? Like in other words, the driver, I, it, it sounds like when a driver is, um, I mean, you're not, you're not picking up your mobile phone and then saying, I'm going to text Bob, this potential driver, right? You have a, a system. I have, a we platform. have a platform. Yeah. Yeah. So we use um, Twilio. Um, it depends. So for the applicants that automatically come in through our website, it's a, it, so we use Salesforce. So there's a company called 360 SMS and they are on the Salesforce platform. So that's why we use them. Um, but no, if it's a smaller operation where you've got, you know, 10, 15 drivers and, you know, yeah, use your cell phone. Um, there are, there's, there's several texting. If you Google uh, texting platforms, there's several, several out there. Um, it's the sense of the cost of that, or is that, I mean, I, I guess it's all rolled into Salesforce, you're saying, or it can be. So. No, there is a cost associated. I mean, because we'll probably send out, and when we send out text, other than the automated text when they first apply, 
we may look at someone that's in the new status fit from 15 days from 15 to 30 days ago and we may mm -hmm. send out mass text of you know 4000 text um, yeah. um so there is a cost it's less than a penny per text and that's only on outgoing text um you know again our volume is pretty high um and then incoming text there's no charge um we also email a ton um, through Salesforce. But if you use your cell phone, I mean, most, I don't know any cell phone plans right now that have um, a texting fee. I think texting is included in almost all cell phone plans now. So, um, but yeah, I mean, if we use, we use, uh, you, you could use your cell phone if you're, if you're a small company. Yeah. Um, but there, I don't, there's so many texting platforms out there. Yeah. And I don't know what the cost is. They you buy tokens. And I don't know what the cost is through Indeed. I just know that they have it. Um, we ju I just see there's a there's a question uh, that's just come in. Some vendors use. Uh, I'm just trying to I'm, I want to make sure I understand this. The question is some vendors use contracted drivers like Lyft. However, if you employ drivers, we can't increase the drivers with their own vehicles. Is there a way around this? Um, well, I mean, I don't know if, what contracts you have or what, what your regulations stipulate that say whether or not a person can use their own vehicle. As an independent contractors, we can use, we can have drivers use their own vehicles um, as long as they follow the requirements set by the PUC, whether the car has to be a 2000, no more than five years old, has to be four door, has to have working seat belts. Um, but if employees, I don't know that employees, you, I think employees have to pay, I just don't know the rules, pay mileage um, for someone to use their own vehicle. And that would get pretty expensive. I, they probably almost get more than they're making what Uber and Lyft is paying. I mean, I think it, the government mileage rate is at 65 cents a mile or something like that. It would get yeah, too expensive. I, I think I, I think I see where this question is going. So because there's a little add on here that just came through. In other words, the vendors say you can't subcontract. So you have a vendor um, and and you can't subcontract out your transportation. So they have to, I'm assuming, I mean, I don't know. I think Anthony, that's a question from you. If you, I don't know if you wanna, if you wanna explain it more, um, you might wanna just, uh, uh, feel free to unmute. Maybe we can explore that a little bit. Oh, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not possible at the moment. But okay. So yeah, we have some vendors that we have a vendor that we created a, a, our own app for them. Um, but then we, the, so we get all the trips. Um, but I, don't, I guess I don't understand what the question is. I mean, because you still have to. You're still your goal is still to re recruit those drivers and the re recruiting still is the same you would still do all of the things to recruit drivers um yeah um whether it's part-time or or full-time or um right yeah um matt i think there was a question that it had come across for you what was that i think someone was just about to jump in if you want to go no. ahead oh Hey, John and Natalie, this is Cheryl Horan. How are you? Oh, good. Hi, Cheryl. Hey, Cheryl. Hi. Thanks so much for that open house. I was lucky to attend that open house last week in yep. Kansas City, and it was it was amazing, and it was very, you know, eye-opening um, to see their operations. But I wanted to comment real quick on, um, is this is this the, just a Massachusetts workshop, John? Yes. Yeah, correct. So the the the... The reason why I ask is the question might have been geared towards in Massachusetts, um, you can't, you, you have to have specific insurance to um, allow independent, you know, like people with their own car to come in. Like, in other words, you can't use a passenger plate. So I don't know if that's what the, the question was getting at, because you can't, you know, you can't do that unless they have commercial insurance for a lot of these contracts. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that would be the way that's, it's that way everywhere. Probably, I, yeah. I know it might be that way too. 
right yeah, where you are, Natalie. We, but so yeah, I mean, we have ninety percent of our drivers are are leasing our vehicle, and it's our insurance. Um, that, um, and that's how we do it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't. I mean, we don't have any drivers that, I mean, we do have some owner operators that use their own insurance and we are required, we require them to have us as additionally insured. Um, the vendor could be an additionally insured. And if they lose that um, coverage, the insurance companies are required to let the additionally insured uh, folks know that that coverage is no longer valid. Um, right. That helps. Um, yeah. So and, and I think that we have to for, for our people that we bring in, we have to, if they do have commercial insurance, they have to make sure they have the, the limits of the, the policy, mm -hmm. you know, according to the contract. So. Yeah. Um, Matt, did you have a, did you want to jump in with a, um, did you have a. Yeah. Question? I mean, circling back a little bit, you kind of listed a lot of platforms that you use for recruiting. How successful are you finding certain platforms to be for recruiting? Like, would you say one is, typically better than, than another for you? Or would, would that change uh, based on industry? Depends on the market. Um, so Indeed is our best. Um, we probably get the most leads out of Facebook. However, our conversion isn't the best, is the, probably the worst with Facebook. Um, and then, so it would go Indeed and then um, Craigslist. We've done ads on like Hireright, uh, Monsters, Simply Hired, and just don't, I mean, you know, get two, three leads where on Indeed, I may get, um, may get anywhere from 30 to 200 um, in a week. It just depends on the, on the market. Um, again, and then when I do do a ad, an ad on, on Craigslist, I don't just list it in transportation. Um, so if I'm looking for any EMT uh, drivers, um, I may list that in healthcare. Um, schools getting ready to get out. I may list that in, in teachers. Um, I list in general labor. Um, uh, I don't just use transportation, but I, uh, you know, healthcare is one I use a lot for the NEMT um, one. Um, Natalie, here's a question for. I mean, everybody's very much aware that it's hard to find. Uh, really, no matter what industry you're in, mm -hmm. it's hard to find people right now. It is. That is expected to probably change um, in, or in or around September, I think. Uh, there's going to be some, there will, there will be changes in federal and state policies um, um, about um, subsidizing or helping people um, throughout this pandemic as the, as the economy gets back to normal. You had a very interesting statistic that basically two thirds of people quit after 90 days or it's not right. It's yeah, dude, it's um, like that, that's the challenge. And that's, and that's employees. That's not independent contractors or okay. taxi drivers. That's employees as a, as a if you Google it. Huh. So if, if, if a, like a call taker, even, you know, you know, yeah. if you, can, you know, so it's all, it's all, all industries is that's that stat. So do you think, I mean, there may, there may be no easy answer to this, but what do you think people respond to more? Do they respond more to, you know, to overcome that two thirds of people leaving after 90 days, do they respond? Is it better to give them training, like consistent training um, throughout, or is it better to give them money? <laughs> retention bonuses or you know put them through the probationary period and then they get some money afterwards or or and it may be a hybrid or I don't know it's probably it's, a high a hybrid for employees um, yeah. um you know if they're if they if if they don't feel comfortable where they are and they're confused and what they're doing they're not going to stay no matter the money um because they're just not going to be happy um, however, you know, you also don't want to just put a retention monetary value on something so that they stay just to get that, to get that bonus and then quit. Cause they are, people are see, seeing that people are talking about that now. Um, you know, it's, we, I saw an ad this morning, someone sent me that McDonald's was giving away free iPhones if you stayed 60 days. 
Um, you know, it's just, it's hard everywhere. Um, again, hopefully some of your, I don't know where Massachusetts is and in, in ending the additional support. Um, so I think it's a mixture of both. You wanna, you wanna train them so that they at least understand why they're staying um, and making them feel important and valued. And um, one of the things that we, are, I think are really good um, as a company is, is if someone sees an inefficiency within the organization um, and they have an idea, we don't poo poo it down. We, we will take input from any one in any position. Each one of our drivers has another, another form. We have a lot of forms, another form that they can complete that says, I have a question. Um, I don't understand. I have a praise. I have a question on why something was double dispatched. I have a question on how, how I'm getting paid. And so those forms go to the managers and someone responds immediately. Um, whether it may be, I don't understand why you got double dispatch, let me look into it. Um, but we give them an outlet to uh, provide us feedback. You know, on our end, we may make a little switch. Maybe it's like we turned on advanced, we changed advanced bookings where drivers can see the, the bookings from the next 24 hours. And maybe we changed the lead time from 20 minutes to 25. And you know how technology is, if you change one thing, it breaks something else. So again, that form allows them to constantly um, communicate with us so that if there is an issue, we fix it right away. Um, and that goes to where a driver may say, hey, if you gave us 30 minutes lead time, um, that would improve X, Y, Z. So having them feel like they're a part of making a change or an impact on, on the company's success, I think is important. Well, great. Um, Natalie, we just have a couple of minutes left and I want to make sure um, to give you a, a moment for just a quick final wrap up. Um, I also want to make sure that everybody knows um, for participating today, everyone's, uh, Natalie has been working extremely hard on a terrific handbook covering so many of these um, topics. That handbook is going to be released next month, but everybody on this call is going to get an advanced copy of that. Um, uh, we expect by next week. Um, so, um, so anyway, you'll get it as soon as it's hot off the presses and um, the, dig the, the uh, digital presses, I guess I should say. Um, Natalie, do you just want to wrap up with a couple of things? And then I just have a couple of quick housekeeping items at the very end of our hour. Um, I will say, like everyone else before me has said, if you have any questions um, and you think of something tomorrow or the next week, please, please don't be afraid to ask a question. Ask how you can implement something. If you um, don't know how to create an ad, um, Canva is, is something that is, is, they have a free version um, and it's a, a platform to create um, digital marketing materials or any, any kind of marketing materials. Um, and they, they in Google, other people's ads and you steal ideas um, on how to have some nice, fun, creative um, ads. If you do Craigslist, there are some HTML um, generators so that when they click on an ad, it'll take them back to that form that you're gonna create. So make it as easy as possible for you to get their information, their name, their email, and their phone number so you can constantly con uh, connect with them. And as a manager, so you can track the success of your recruiter or at least see how many leads you're getting so that that way, um, three months from now, you can say, you know, we got 100, 100, 100 leads, but we didn't bring one person in. What are we doing wrong? And then you can at least fix the problem versus an issue you don't, you think you know, or you don't know. Great, thank you very much, Natalie. And, oh, um, thank you. Yeah, I mean, really, that was a terrific presentation. I mean, I have, um, I will say, I've, I've now been listening to Natalie talk on this subject for several years now, and I can, I can honestly say she's just the top, top uh, um, industry expert on recruitment and retention. And I just love the, you have a system in place, and I think that's mm -hmm. all about. It's like you don't leave it to guesswork. It is all about the system and. Uh, and you work the system and it works for you. So thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Oh, thank you.
And thank you to all of our participants. If you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to send us an email at info at the transportationalliance.org. And last but not least, a couple of quick things that are coming up. Our next webinar is gonna be on June 17th and it is called Win More Contracts by Creating a Winning Proposal. Um, that is gonna be presented by Joe Rubino, who is an industry expert and he has a terrific track record in helping companies do exactly that. Um, Matt has just put in the chat um, a link to that webinar. I would highly encourage people uh, to sign up for that today if you can. Um, again, it's win more contracts by creating a winning proposal. So a hot topic that will help everybody. And second, I just want to make sure that everyone marks their calendars because the Transportation Alliance is heading back to Las Vegas this fall for its annual convention, Mobilize 2021. That is going to be October 14th to 17th at the Paris Las Vegas Resort and Casino. We will um, have a sign up, uh, you know, sign up information on the website very, very soon. Uh, so keep an eye on the Transportation Alliance's website. We will, of course, be sending you out several emails about that, but sign up as soon as you, as soon as you get that. And we're all itching to travel and to shake one another's hands and see some old friends and, and meet some new ones. Um, so uh, everybody's really excited about that. And with that, I um, just want to thank everybody for coming. Have a wonderful weekend. And of course, let's, um, let's remember all those who gave their lives in uh, military service for our country this, uh, this weekend. Thank you so much. Be well, and we will see you soon. Bye.